Then I got a cold. Then my back wanna hurt. I said, oh heck no, I'm gonna bring this word regardless of what goes on. Because you know what? The enemy comes to take that word from you. You know, if you got an uh, on-time word. Yes. I can remember, look, I'm gonna go down memory lane for a minute. I can remember the time when I was working as a waitress. I had a friend that would come in. And back then, I didn't know the weight of the word. She would always come in, complaining. My back hurt, my feet hurt, my this and my that. So by the time she got through, we all was hurting. Because that was the power of the word, you know what I'm saying? Instead, so it got to the point where when we see her coming, we would go the opposite direction. Because we didn't want to hear no negativity coming out of her mouth. Because that would affect you all that, all that eating from, from your job. Because that's power in the word. Because it's that in the beginning was a word. We're going to John 1 and 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. And the word was God. So that tells me that was Jesus. In order for that word, Jesus Christ, to come to earth, this had to happen. He had to find a virgin to give birth to the word, who is Jesus Christ. He couldn't just get anybody. He had to have a virgin that was pure. So when the word came to, to the world, it was a pure word. It wasn't tainted at all. It came straight from the crown, from, from the throne room. And this is why we have to do our everyday life, the word of God. We cannot waver. We have to stand on the word of God because Luke, 8 and 11 said, the word of God is Jesus Christ. He's a seed. And in order to have a word planted, it has to be planted by God. And we're going to go to Luke, uh, Luke 8 and 22. You remember those bad boys that was on the ship with Jesus? Remember them? His disciples? How they got on and are we there yet? How they got on the ship. Mm -hmm. Jesus was minding his own business. So here comes the wave, just tossing and turning. They got scared. They was wondering, okay, why is he over there asleep, calm, and we over here fearful? Yeah. See, they didn't know that was the word that was sleep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So once he spoke the word, it became calm. Yeah. The storm ceased. They did not realize that they had the word with him, yeah. with them. So they should not be afraid yeah. of that word because he had the power to stop anything. So he said, peace be still. Yeah. And there was peace. But see, we have a bad habit Say we trust God. I'm speaking for myself now. That we believe for certain things from God. And when we get that thing, we don't know how to handle that word. When we get a prophetic word, we had to take that word, meditate on it. We had to take that word and speak it back to ourselves. We had to do like David did. Mm -hmm. David looked in the mirror and encouraged his own self with the word of God. So that's what we have to do as an individual. The word of God in Genesis 2 and 7 said the word of God is the breath of God. Mm -hmm. What that tells you? It is his breath. Yes. Wow. So if he's... He took that word, blew into man, and made him a living being. So what do you think that his word would do for us? He can blow on us. He can resurrect us with the word of God. All you got to do is believe what the word says. And how do you think the world was put in existence? The word, the world was formed by the word of God. Genesis 1 and 3 said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1 and 6 said, God said, let there be affirmative. He divided the, word, the water from the earth. And that's the power of the word. We have the same power. He gave us that power. Yes. He gave us that power. We have to stand on what the word of God says. Yes. And 2 Timothy 2 and 9 talks about the word of God being bound. Moffat's translation means <laughs> it will accomplish whatever it says. 
We have to believe in that. We have to speak that word in and out of season. No matter what what time, how hard it looks, we have to still stand on the word of God. Even though we may be wavering like this, like a palm tree, ripping back and forth, back and forth, but we still have that word to hold us up. And Hebrews 4 and 12 said the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, pierced into the divine thunder of spirit and joints and marrow. My translation is, if it don't get you going in, he's going to get you coming out. <laughs> 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 Those people around Jericho, remember the Jericho wall in, in, um, in Joshua 6, 1 through 20? Now Joshua had a command to tell the people to walk around the wall seven times. And the reason why he told them not to say a word, because you know sometimes we have a problem complaining. Yeah. Okay, why is he saying this? What's the, problem, what's the purpose of it? See, that very thing could have aborted what God has for them to do. Yeah. Mm. So they took that word and they walked around for seven days with their mouth shut. They, I'm sure they didn't like it. But anyway, that seven day, the wall came down. Amen. And the seven means perfection. Yeah. So whatever God told those men to do, they did it. And that was the right thing to do. We have a problem of coming up. Complaining, complaining. God said, be still. We're still talking about why is this and why is that. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient with, with the word of God. Once the seventh day came, they walked around. They had the trumpet sound. This is my, this is my translation. So they had walked so long, they probably was tired. So when the seventh day came, they shouted with a shout. And then the walls came down. The wall came down because they were obedient to what the word, what, what Joshua had told them to do. So we have to be obedient. As a man and woman of God in the house, we have to be obedient to what they tell us to do. Because the words come from on high. It ain't something they made up. It's something that God gave them for us to do. And listen, look at Luke 1 and 20. We know about Zechariah. A word, the same angel came to Zechariah that came to Mary about having a baby. And, and Mary responded with, whatever the Lord says, that's what she's going to do. And she know that word is going to come to pass. But Zechariah, he had this going on about his mouth going, mouth going, mouth going, blah, 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 how we do. So what the, what the angels did, they shut his mouth up. Because if they hadn't, he would, he would have went and told everybody in town that what was going on. So in order for them not to work their word, the, the, they had, he had to have his mouth shut up. Sometimes we need to put a bridle on our mouth at times. All of us, I'm speaking for myself now. Because whatever, we, whatever God has for us, we can abort that promise by our negativity coming out of our mouth. So we have to watch what we're saying.